Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Kenny Boucher, and I'm joined tonight by my partners in crime, Robbie B. Free Zone, no adult supervision. We got Mike Haspel, the author of Good Yard Shift, and Wyatt Turk, my main dude from Jack Club's Painting. What's up, guys? How's it going? Yo, what's up? We're here. We're back. Uh, Robbie B. had to take the night off. We had speculated in the pregame show what the cause is. I said he's at a wide eyes shut uh, pre-presidential campaign party. Or Dorian yeah. Gray, like he's got to do his yearly annual meet to stay youthful. What do you guys think? Yeah, he's uh, definitely like absorbing souls of some kind. Just keep his youth. I think it's both. I think that's like hand in hand, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So it's both. It's all of it. He's yeah. doing that shady shit because he didn't tell us. He was like, "Yo, I'm not gonna be." Like, yeah. He always is like, "Yo, I can't make it because of some shit." He did not offer an explanation. I'm assuming he didn't want us to know. Yep, we're yeah. just like, so, "Oh, okay." Out in the woods with a bunch of congressmen wearing owl masks, and there Doing may or some, may not be virgins. There's gonna be involved. some D's and some A's. It's gonna be yeah. A- <laughs> there's there's a jar of mustard. NPR playing real loud. Yeah, talk radio <laughs> bumping. It's the real Bilderbergers <laughs> conference. The yeah. other one is the B club. <laughs> this is the real one. The real deal. <laughs> Oh my God. But we got Mike back. You know, we get to see Mike sometimes. He's been busy uh, busting his ass. Uh, Let me get a shout out. Mike, you're going on vacation soon. Yes. Yeah. I'm heading down to New Zealand um, to spend a lot of money and help the New Zealand economy (laughs) and basically just be a nerd. And I have to say this, uh, my wife is going to New Zealand. I'm going back to Middle Earth. That's the way I see it. And I also have to give a shout out to all the Kiwis who, who reached out to me. Um, and it's just like fantastic guys. You know, it's like, we are probably not going to be able to meet up, but I had uh, a bunch of folks just reach out and, you know, lots of hospitality and, and, you know, suggestions on what to do down there. So it was just really, really welcoming. Very good. And, and I also need to mention, uh, Nova star who's a long, long time friend of the show, uh, Dylan, he's actually in Denver this week. So I was able to drive up. And uh, and meet up with them. And unfortunately, we were going to go to a to a game store in Denver called Enchanted um, Enchanted Grounds, which is a game store with a coffee shop in it, which is just awesome. Oh, that's cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, I love it. Um, but we weren't able to get there because I I had another meeting afterwards, so I couldn't I couldn't. Uh, we ran out of time, unfortunately. But yeah, it was a good time. We just uh, hung out and and talked, chatted up, reminisced about games of forty k. So it was a good time. Yeah, I mean, if you guys, I mean, it, it's kind of, we've been doing this so long now that I feel like we get a staple of people uh, who are friends of the show who come by our hometowns and hit us up online. And I feel like I've been seeing you guys in this chat for so many years that it's like, it's not even weird. My lady would be like, do you even know this person? I was like, yeah, I know this dude for six years. She's like, like for <laughs> yeah. real? I was like, for real? In chat. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I've had tons of people come over to the Beats Lab. Like, actually, you said uh, New Zealand. is it, My boy, Captain Flashheart, was in town on vacation. I saw him last week from New Zealand. He came by the crib, hung out at the Beats Lab. Nice. And love it. If you guys are ever going to be in one of our towns, hit us up. At the very least, we'll meet you on neutral ground in broad daylight at a coffee shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm the guy who's like, just come over to my house. Yeah. Come, you know, come alone. Come alone. Don't bring anybody. <laughs> No cops. No, no cops. <laughs> Which I love. Uh, but here we are with Wyatt in a would you rather. He says he promises is the stakes are never have been this high. Yeah, I don't. So I've been trying to make each Spooktober would you rather bigger than the last one. And I don't know how I'm going to make this one bigger. Like uh, this is going to be a real, real hard one to top as far as stakes are concerned. But all right. Apocalypse scenario. Would you rather Cthulhu wake up or the biblical end times? Which one do you oh, got to live through? It's so good. This is a good one. I already know the Damn. answer for me. <laughs> like actually Cthulhu awakens 
unleashes all types of unspeakable horrors upon the earth or the literal end times in the biblical sense, which has its own its own bag of snakes to go along with it. I'm going to have to go, even though every fiber of my being is like Lovecraft, right? I have to go with the biblical. I need it to be biblical. I'm with you. I need it to be biblical. I need it. I need it. Yeah. I agree. Biblical end times. Because Cthulhu, here's, here's the bottom line, right? It's like there's, there might be a happy ending with biblical end times. There is not a happy ending. Unspeakable <laughs> horrors is what we're discussing when you're discussing. And he, he literally doesn't care. Like he wouldn't even notice you were there. He would just be like, this is happening now. Welcome as a thought and the pan, you know, play flute gods on the Every side. Every day you're the old alive. ones return. Yeah. yeah. Nyarlathotep is now up all up in your crap. And it's like, nah, that's no fun. And, yeah. Well, I feel like I can have some fun with the biblical end times. Yeah. Like running around is like the, the sky's falling, fire and brimstone. I'm just like, yo, apocalypse all day. Oh, there's so much more than that. And the bit like there's like oh, an yeah. entire war between angels and yeah, demons. I get to be a part of that. Antichrist. What side do you okay. stand on? Oh, here's the real beast, question. Beast with the seven heads. We're both all that stuff. We're both coming picking out biblical. The ocean and, yeah. Which is bad because that means we don't get to like say why our choice is better than the other. Okay, here we go. Biblical end times, apocalypse scenario. Which Raider gang are you a part of, Aswell? Mm, war or death. I'm, I'm running with them. <laughs> All day. I'm with Pestilence, of course. That's my main dude right there. That's my posse. <laughs> no, never even crossed my mind to be on an angel team. <laughs> like, I'm going to be... Spoiler alert. They're all angels. Oh. True. True, 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 <laughs> like true, true. literally they are all angels so you're on an angel team damn it whose team can i be on then that's not one of those guys is there a oh, dragon I mean, at even... least somebody's a dragon in end times well there's a beast with seven heads is he yeah. technically an angel no does he take his orders directly from anyone yes who the antichrist with him i think that, that's my team or satan that's my team who is an angel yeah it's cool. I'll tell you, I'm I'm third down, I'm down in the rank, so I don't really talk to those guys. I'm with the seven the seven headed beast. That's my that's my dude. Whatever he needs, I got him. He needs his belly scratched, <laughs> he needs his hair groomed, he needs her to bring a bunch of human sacrifices. <laughs> I'm with that crew. Uh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be brutal. It's way more fun than fucking Cthulhu. Yeah, I feel like Cthulhu. In fact, I'm actually playing with that trope in one of the future books I have called The Scrying Stone, where guy, because our generation, like Cthulhu's like in games and we have stuffed Cthulhu's. I literally have a stuffed, a stuffed Cthulhu with a Christmas hat on it. Um, Cthulhu's kind of like an inside joke. So it wouldn't even drive me to madness. I would just be like, oh, that's Cthulhu. He's bigger than I thought he was. Remember last <laughs> week? <laughs> Was it last week we did the uh, are you in the event horizon death scene or are you in? Uh, in yeah, so so last week's was would you rather be a crew member on the event horizon or be visited by the Cenobites? And so I feel like Cthulhu is like everything that happens on the bridge to the bridge crew of the fucking event horizon for like. Then after that, they go hang out with the Cenobites and get their faces torn off for all eternity. And then still more. That's that's like that's Cthulhu world the entire time. That's why I don't want to be a part of the Cthulhu world. (laughs) That's brutal. That's unspeakable cosmic horror. Yeah, I feel like the Cenobites like is far worse than the event horizon. By I, the way. I picked Cenobites because I feel like at least because I, I, I solved the puzzle box. I brought them in and maybe there's a chance based on the narrative of Clive Barker that I could be one of them and at least be on their team. Whereas like the event horizon, you're just like, Hey, let's do this. I feel like I'm forgetting some Geller fields. Shit. Yeah. And then you end up <laughs> ripping your own inshaws out to your own fucking mouth. Yeah. That sucks. You A bonus. You learn Latin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liberate tutte me ex infernis. 
Yeah, I just remember that crap. Oh, you're so. old. You're past 40. We went over this. <laughs> you know everything. I, I literally, like, I turned I, I turned 48, and I speak Latin now. <laughs> That's how it happens. It's, you just gifted gifted that. It's like a D&D. That you know. and a uh, starter box for a historical war game. Yeah. Uh, that yep, was just that's right. Just you opened your cover one day and there it was. You're like, what the fuck? Yep. That's a good one. I like the I like these spooktober themed uh would you rather? This is pretty cool. Uh Rob uh, Rob did pick the Event Horizon though, uh Haspel. He cited the fact that it was like at least kind of like a fun party for a little while, it seemed like, until it went to went terrible. <laughs> so it's like at least like I get five minutes of a birthday party or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> Solid would you rather? I am very happy with that one, Wyatt. Um so we don't have Rob here, so we get to jump into nerd shit however we want. So we're gonna kick it, we're gonna hand it over to Wyatt. He's gonna do the, the nerdiest part of this. Just bear with us. This part's the, the stuff. Oh always. my god, which <laughs> He said, do pre orders. <laughs> pre orders. Yeah. Oh, okay. That Gundam part, is yeah. at the that end. That is I'm, the nerd okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sh- I'm not shitting on your shit. All right, cool. So we've got some pre-orders coming up this weekend for the Imperial Fists and Salamanders Codex supplements, as well as two beefy boys to add to your army with Tor Garadon and the Salamander guy that nobody cares about. Um, Also, we're getting an Imperial Fists upgrade pack with sprue and transfer sheets. This is the same one that came in the uh, battle box they did for Christmas last year. So it's been a long time coming. And also another one of those for salamanders. And because somebody asked earlier, each one of these, if they're keeping with the trend, will have two transfer sheets and two sprues of the little uh, upgrade upgrade kit in there. Uh, also getting data cards as per usual. Uh the limited editions, of course, with some really cool artwork. Uh, the Impulsor is finally going to go on pre-order that we've waited super, super long for. Um, and the Infiltrators slash Incursors box will be available for pre-order. So I also dropped my two new fresh t-shirt designs. I'm going to plug my shit. Heretic Swag. <laughs> Tor Garadon Parody. I'm using that word real strong now. Got one of those up in the store. And of course we've got, did you see my salamander design? Uh, it's yes. Already, already caused a couple of hate, hate comments on the salamander Facebook group. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love somebody it. Was as like, expected. Yeah. I mean, as, as at my design, somebody was like, I'm not paying money for a blue cage t-shirt. I was like, <sighs> word. That's I would rather pay money for a white man in blackface. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. Probably, that didn't sound, that sounded better yeah, in my Why head. do you want a picture yeah. of Justin Trudeau? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Canada hit. Bow. Mm. <laughs> mm. Gangster. <laughs> got, got butt slammed. <laughs> we, we got those up. But if I'm going to talk about shirts for just one second, uh, we've got more stuff to talk about. But we have a lifetime membership sale, longwar.net. Uh if you're watching live, I threw the link out there, but all you got to do is go somewhere on the internet and type in long war or something lifetime membership. I'm sure you'll get to spiky bits homepage. And there is a sale there. We're giving out the new long war TV, new media logo, reimagined, retiring the old logo. That logo made its way to a Jersey limited time only November lifetime memberships all get that shirt free. Actually, what you get is $35 credit on the shop that you can buy whatever you want. The shirt's 30 bucks. So you can actually send some of that towards shipping, even some of your uh, taxes. You can get it totally free, but you don't have to get the jersey. If you don't like the jersey, you can get a shirt. You can get a hoodie, whatever you want. That's the new promotion. It's going to be happening all November long. Longwar.nut. So many links. Hold on a second. Spikybits.com, longwar.net, longwarswag.com. Those are all the things. Solid promo. How do I? <laughs> Very professional. Very professional. And now back to Haspel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard, so you, I heard, I, you, I heard you put out a new podcast episode. Yeah. So I saw Joker and uh, got kind of, I saw it twice in one weekend and uh, I couldn't do any work. So I, it got into my head. So there's a new QFD episode out if you guys are looking for it. 
uh, where I talk about the Joker. So you can go peep it out if you want to. And then the other thing I discovered, and and people will know about this, like when I threw it out on on Facebook, like everybody was like, "Dude, that's like super old." But there's a there's an anime called uh, Genlock that's on. Well, I was watching on Amazon, um, but apparently it's made by the Rooster Teeth guys who used to make uh, Red versus Blue, and uh, it is solid, man. It is like part Robotech, part Voltron. Um, just vibes of everything. It's got an incredible cast, like Michael B. Jordan, Maisie Williams is on it, David Tennant. Uh, I, it's it's amazing. I can't wait till season two. So give it if you if you like Voltron, if you like Robotech, uh, you definitely need to check it out. It's it's got that vibe. You're gonna love it. Robotech isn't that that Gundam stuff? It is like Gundam stuff. I think it's partially ripped off of Gundam stuff, to be honest. I'm just trolling uh, Wyatt, who's muted right now, to prompt him into his Why Gundam section. Right yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't play a lot of video games, but a new one has uh, just released over in the NA area called Gundam Battle Operation Two, and it's a free to play game on PlayStation, and I have been immediately addicted to it it's a ton of fun so if you're a huge gundam nerd like i am definitely check it out because it is free to play uh i feel like bandai knows the north american market pretty good so because it's free and westerners are typically pretty wary of anything with uh loot boxes and stuff like that they gave everybody like a ton of free shit just for downloading the game and I've played it for the last two weeks and I got to say like there is no pay to win mechanic in the game, which I know a lot of people are usually wary of when you hear the words free to play. Uh, But I can tell you through my extensive experience over the past two weeks, there are no pay to win mechanics and it's just great fun for free. So definitely check it out. Yeah, you were playing that shit hard like last week, every time I hit you up. You were like, I need to study to put this game down. I need to paint these models. It's my new crack, and I'm addicted. No, it's only on PlayStation. P.S. Another PlayStation exclusive. <sighs> yeah. Man. I mean, it's Bandai. I mean, Xbox does not do well in the Japanese market, so it's no surprise. Yeah. That makes sense. Speaking of uh, things that take your attention away from getting ready for tournaments... The tournament we were talking about, a SoCal Open. That's next week, guys. Uh, down here in San Diego, down by the, I think it's like the, the parade grounds down there. Like, Sunny San Diego. It's real nice this time of year in California. This is like that time of year where you're like, God damn, this is the best. Like, it's going to be in this like outdoor slash indoor semi permanent structure. Yep. It's there every year. It's, they just like literally open the windows and it's the most comfortable temperature you've ever seen. It's like, Literally across the street from the ocean. Yeah. And the breeze just goes straight through there. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's so big, the space, that everyone's table's an island. And there's probably going to be yeah, two to 300 people. Mm-hmm. That is ideal. That is amazing. But it's so hard to get a venue that can do that. Yeah. If, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm so stoked on it. And so this will be my third year. And I've historically done poorly at these events with two, three, and three records back to back, Mike. Both times I went three and zero day one, crushed it out, and went zero and three day two. So I, it's just my Ouch. curse. It's my curse. SoCal Open is my curse. Last year I crushed my way onto the top table, live streamed it, was up there on the frontline game web, uh, stream. I was like, "This is awesome!" And then Nick Rose just straight, you know, fucking bodies me round four. And then I lose my next two games. Like, why can't I get a positive record here? Why is it always just? Breaking even because uh, all the good players are there. All man. the good players are there. So it's tough. It's a little bit tougher, but I have spent a year getting more prepared than I was last year. I feel much more confident going in this year with my new chaos list ready for Iron Hands, which we will talk about Iron Hands tonight. Iron Hands, I hop the new uh, uh, acronym. Is that is that what it's called? Yeah, we're trying to I hop. I hop. Like, yeah. Definitely make that happen. Is that a, is that what an acronym is when you make a word that you can say off of initials for another word? Yes, because if you can pronounce it, this is okay. I'm going to go into some English. Please, geekery. please. If you can, if you can pronounce it as a word like IHOP or NASA, 
That is an acronym. If you have to say each letter, it is an initialism. So like FBI, CIA, you can't pronounce that as a word, right? It's FBI. So that's an initialism. Whereas like NASA, you can say as a word. So that's an acronym. There you go. IHOP is the new acronym. Iron Hands OP. Yeah. We will talk about it. And so I'm ready. We talk about it. I've been doing a weekly tax discussion, why it's been a part of it. Because he's actually bringing Iron Hands, the new heat, which we're going to discuss. He's coming all the way to SoCal Open. That's what this game has been taking away from him getting it ready. But he's ready now. We also <laughs> we also simultaneously discovered on a, on a side note that he's in the top 100, I think, of the hobby tracker right now. Yeah. It, it So the ITC rankings fluctuate like literally daily. But the other day when I looked, I was ranked 84th in the ITC hobby track. So I'm going to bring my little display tray for you so you can uh, yeah. so we can try to keep that trend going. He's bringing his iron hands. We've been we can go back and forth on how to beat them. I took two L's to new space Marines on my new list, which I've been doing really good with. And so I've back in the beats lab. I've reformulated it. I felt so good about this list against iron hands. I submitted it last week, even though we can't we don't have we have three more days to submit. I didn't even need to see the results of battle for salvation, which is our next topic. To know I felt good. So I feel strongest I've ever felt going into SoCal Open. I feel prepared. I feel like that's always been my issue is I go in not prepared enough. And so I do really good with like my experience level. And then I play against everyone who's really good and more prepared. They destroy me. So this year, and whereas like when we go to LVO, which is so huge and has such an international draw, I'm able to skirt a lot of competition. So I've been doing like five and one three years in a row at LVO. It's a little like I won't lie. LVO is an easier tournament than SoCal Open. Just is. Even though there's 800 people. Yeah. Which, the field is so much broader, mm-hmm. which is particularly. Like, so the reason that I'm playing Iron Hands at SoCal is because, you know, you don't show up to a gunfight with a knife. So if everybody at SoCal knows that Iron Hands is coming and they're preparing for Iron Hands, I don't want to be stuck out with Ultramarines when Iron Hands have the defensive tools to at least you know, show up yeah. ready to fight. Well, it's like, it's know? classic. Can't beat them. Join them. Your other list yeah. doesn't play versus iron hands well enough. And in a pinch, the best it's easiest solution was to build a quick iron hands list. Like you're like, yo, my, my, my ultramates just aren't up for the snuff right now. So if I'm going to build all these new models, might as well make them iron hands. Yeah. And then for LVO, since the field is so much broader, it'll be back to ultramarines, which I really, like, we, we've been doing discussions on that for like the last month. And I feel really confident in saying that I think that was the right decision. And also, and, and you choosing to do Iron Hands has led to us a lot of discussions back and forth about how, how to make my list better. Um, yes. And so I feel real good going into it. So let's just do it right now. Uh, Battle for Salvation was last week. That's the East Coast SoCal Open, essentially, where all the hardcores in that metropolitan area go in there. They have a 100-man tournament. Some of the biggest who's who's of the East Coast dick stomping scene went there. And we've got some stats for you, why it's going to walk us through it. Yeah, so a um, lot of Adeptus studies in the top rankings at Battle for Salvation. Um, and most of those are going to be some version of Astartes using Iron Hands. But the top Iron Hands lists are not actually using Iron Hands. They're Iron Hands successors. So what we were seeing was that these units that everybody is scared of, like the Iron Father and the Iron Stone and the uh, Triple Executioner and the Leviathan Dreadnought, were not in these lists. These were some really eclectic lists, making use of strengths that the Iron Hands supplement gives to people, doing extremely well, and also... um, this usually happens when spicy new rules come out. There's always like one big event that's like not everybody is prepared for them. And so the new spicy rules can play the gotcha bitch cards and they do really well. But as far as rankings are concerned, uh, Nick Rose was the winner. He got first place with his iron hands list. Um, he's got a bike captain, a librarian, librarian and Phobos armor. And a tech marine on bike. He's got the new incursors, uh, the ten man intercessor squad, which is uh, real scary. Some scouts, bunch of scouts, because he's got a brigade. It's a brigade. Yeah, he's using three of the new tactical war suits, 
uh, with the auto cannons on him for the tactical flex there. Uh, land speeders actually. So like another for the side for brigade. You it's land yeah. spe- for me. It's land speeders or attack bikes. Those are the so. Yeah. Well, and also land speeders because they have mostly heavy weapons mounted on them are actually pretty useful now that the Iron Hand stuff uh, is out because just like the flyers that are very popular, the uh, land speeders benefit from those rules too, kind of giving them a boost that they needed. No, for sure. And also, he, we did mention he's using successor chapters, so it's a weapon artisan and stealth. Is that what it is? Yes. So yes. every one of these units innately, because they do have Iron Hand's enhanced combat doctrine where they get to re-roll the ones with the heavy weapons – well, every one of these units also can just raw dog reroll one hit and one wound. So if you roll the two, you still get to reroll that for at least one. So it's incredibly, that's also what the salamanders have innately is that weapon artisan thing. It's yes. really strong. So, you know, these units have a bunch of little shots that reroll the ones. You get to flip a two as well. And then when you go to wound on a certain number, you get to innately flip at least one of those as well. So you're mm-hmm. seeing this a lot. These top players are really figuring out the best combination of how to use the iron hand keyword with the stratagems and the best successor traits. And you see this a lot. So please continue. You're at triple land speeder for the fast. Yep. And then he, yeah, then he has um, two eliminator squads with uh, bolts, sniper rifles and two thunderfire cannons. A really eclectic classic Nick Rose list. And he went in there undefeated, won the whole thing. Well, but who else was in the top eight or the top? The top. Uh, so it's you know Nick Rose and then Mark Hertel, Andrew Gagno, Sean Naden, Jack Harpster, uh, Trevor Harris, and then you know we also see people like Nick Nanavati's there, uh, Jared Parker. You know, there's so there's the top a lot 10, of how many Iron Hands were top ten? Let me see. Uh, one to you. Uh, Ganyo is playing Raven Guards. Three, four, four in the top ten. So four Iron Hands in the top ten at the very yep. first event. It's fifty percent of the top eight if you're going bracket style. Um, and they think they said there was eleven to twelve Iron Hands at the tournament, right? Yeah. So, uh, in the chat, somebody says eight, but. Uh, I think that other people were playing other chapters. I think there was a white scar and a Raven guard in there, right? Yeah. Cause so Ganyo is playing, uh, his says Raven guard. Yeah. And, uh, How did Ganyo place? He is third, third with Raven guard. So, mm-hmm. so, so out of three iron hands, there's also, uh, three Eldari in the top 10 class and standard, two orc lists, which is also really cool. And we're talking about at some point. Uh, so battle for our salvation just happened. Right. And so now that will go into soul Cal open as the two big uh, pendulums across the nation. Right. Yeah. So now we get to discuss and rehash uh, a discussion. We've had three or four times this week already about how OP iron hands is and how, the internet is exploding, and I would, and I, and I don't, I don't use this term lightly. I'm going to say the internet's triggered. Yep, their jimmies are rustled. Straight. So this is a trigger warning. Um, prepare. <laughs> depending on what you're listening, depending on how you took the title of this show, which is IHOP Iron Hands Overpowered. If you're coming in here to have your opinion uh, corroborated, or you want to just see what it's about, validated, validated. Uh, you may, depending on what your opinion is, may not be happy because I think we're all universally, we're not always universal on a subject on the podcast, but I think universally we all are like, eh. Yeah. So you're overreacting. Uh, <laughs> my my official stance is that Iron Hands are very strong, but all of the Space Marine supplements so far have been very strong and there is no need to scream and whine and cry that they need to have their rules eviscerated and nerfed because if you took the time and energy that you're taking to write these angry posts on Facebook and use that time and energy to figure out how to actually play against Iron Hands, you'd figure out that there's already existing 
solutions to this problem. Like a lot of the other players are doing right now, gearing up for these big events. So as a discussion, we, we've already done it a few times, so we've rehearsed it pretty well. So I think we've got a couple major points to cover. Like Iron Hands, really fucking strong. We all we admit it. Yeah, right? that's not even an argument. Like really we strong. all know they're really strong. That's not what we're saying. Let's throw a couple facts in there, though. Uh, Salamanders and Imperial Fist aren't out yet. Also, yep. Raven Guard did really well. Ganya went third with them. Okay? Yep. So, uh, I heard that White Scars were doing really well, too. So... Turns out Space Marines real good. Now, Iron Hands might be the best right now of the Space Marines, but Space Marines are good. Okay. We don't know how good Iron Hands are yet, or uh, Imperial Fist are. We don't know how good Salamanders are. So we're still playing in a total vacuum. And even SoCal Open, they're all going to miss the cutoff date. So we're yeah. not, we're, we're, it's still a vacuum. So Haspel, what was, how many years did you say? Half a billion years since? Half a billion. That's a pretty accurate list. Half? Time frame of. Of how long of this has when, been going on? Yeah. yeah. It's the circle of life. Yeah. They come out with a codex for a couple of months. It is the new hotness OP stuff. And then somebody figures out how to defeat it. Yeah. Or then, when they don't, when in rare situations, it be, it's the most obnoxious thing. Everyone's yeah. playing it. No one's delineating from the template. GW then at that point comes in and makes an adjustment. But not when 10 people played the list. Four of them made it to the top eight, and all four were a yep. different list. That's not what GW gives a shit about. Uh, and also, the one thing that I don't see anybody talking about in these like big stat sheets that the people are making in the competitive forums, like, oh, well, they played like this many games with this win rate. Yeah, but like, hey, uh, the people that played those lists at Battle for Salvation are some of the best players in the country. So, like, Nick Rose could have come into Battle for Salvation with any faction and probably won that tournament. You know, like Nick Nanavati, Andrew Gagno. Five those of those guys, names like, you they're said. They're some of the yeah. best players in the country. Yeah. But so but why? Maybe it's it skewed a little bit. Imperial Guard Leaf Blower is the most broken thing this game's ever seen. You have to. Cons- oh, wait a minute. I flashed back to like fourth edition. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. we got new. It, then the, then people started putting terrain on the tables and Leaf Blower didn't matter. <laughs> so like yeah. this, this, like <laughs> half a billion years that we've been doing this, this is, this is the normal. I mean, we talked about this. Back in the day, when they came out with a White Dwarf article that Chaos knew authorized demon rules for the Screamers and the Flamers. They were so brutal, so good. Fate Weaver rerolls, everything. Everyone went out and bought it. And then GW put out the new codex, and the rules were totally nerfed down. So GW is also not above making rules here and then fixing them later, because also they're business. So like this is a half a billion years. This has always been the case. We've never not seen this. What about for six months, Why, when uh, Eldar were literally 50% of the top eight and way more yeah. than 10% of the field? I mean, I literally have not seen a GT where Eldari was not in the top 10. Yeah, and there was a time like when they were- nerf after nerf after nerf. Yeah. They're still there. So they got, so GW nerfed them specifically because they had to take a look at Soul Burst and a couple prominent top players like Nick Navadi put out articles on how- this is why the list is this way, and this is how strong it is, and this is where the mechanics are abusive, right? So you need top players like these guys we mentioned to find the exploits because GW can't do it. That's what they do. So they play it, they expose it, and then what happens is if you see like 30% of the fields playing it, and then you look at the list and you see that there's only like four units being cycled through all those lists, that's when GW steps in. When they see that there's 400 Fire Raptors at a tournament, they're going to do something about it. When they see how yeah. Soul Burst works, they can do something about it. When they see that everyone for six months played a castle and three Smash Captains and 32 Imperial Guardsmen, they're going to do something about it. We're not even yep. to that part of this narrative yet. We haven't even gotten the Iron Hands FAQ yet. Yeah, I actually think they're waiting for the uh, next two supplements to come out before they do a FAQ cleanup. Because there was that kind of like, there's that long period of time between the um, Ultramarines and White Scars and then the Iron Hands and Raven Guard where they did the Space Marine Codex FAQ with small erratas for the two supplements. And so they're probably going to wait for Imperial Fists and Salamanders to come out and then they'll push the little errata out for that. Or they might be waiting until the end of October to do it, which is about the same timeline for, for both of those to come out. So we'll see. And we also have chapter approved coming down the pipe probably at the end of November. 
you know, let me let me let me, and let me go back in time. <clears throat> which yeah, chapter proof going to change some things, uh, and we will t- we're going to keep talking about our hands for a minute. Uh, but Haspel told a story earlier. Uh, tell that story about how you kicked my ass with uh, brand new Thunderwolf Calvary. Yeah, it's like the only time I ever beat Kenny. Um, and it was because the Space Wolf Codex had just dropped. And there was a thing known as Thunderwolf Cavalry. And Kenny was playing a very powerful chaos list that he had used for a while. It was like two defilers. In I don't the, remember the whole thing. In, of that I remember era, it was really strong. In that awesome. era. We had obliterators, yeah. all that stuff. Well, your defilers were like were like customized and they looked amazing. Mm-hmm. That's why I remember the defilers. But like I just ran up on them and it was like strength ten thunderwolves, like enjoy. Yeah. Um, but it was a total gotcha. You know what I mean? And it was just because it was brand new. And they didn't get nerfed because you know what? There was a rollout of of really powerful new codexes. Blood Angels, Grey Knights. Yep. Uh, I think Demons got their new decks. Like it was a rollout. And so they were the first one. But you know what? Thunderwolf Cav Spam with the with the Long Fangs, that was day one meta. Day two meta was Razor Spam. Remember? Razor Wolves. So like yep, it had to yep. evolve because that list was no longer the list as things started coming out. And that's where we are, in my opinion, with Iron Hands. It's out. It's strong. It's combos. We've already done four episodes on Iron Hands. You guys know what the combos are. Okay? They exist. But we got Salamanders yet to come out. Imperial Fish just previewed today, which we will break that down too. Uh, by all accounts, uh, uh, singles from the front line, Reese has been saying that that the fists are going to be the strongest. It's silly. Even though the preview today might not tell that whole story, he also started saying things like salamanders are stronger than eye hands. I've seen all the salamander rules. I think salamanders are stronger than eye hands. So you're going to see within the Space Marine factions, it's going to be the MCU Civil War of Space Marines and tournaments for a little while as all the white scars and Raven Guard and salamanders and Iron Hands and Ultramarines are going at it. And I think they're going to kind of all have a bit, have, have answers for each other. And then they're going to be gatekeepers for each other. And then it will settle down and then we'll understand if it needs to be addressed or not. Like it always has historically in GW, say what you will about them. I do often, but in 8th edition, they've been pretty on their game with, with FAQs and I've been happy. Even when they mess up an FAQ, they have rolled them back and fixed them. Yep. So let's talk about the flyers though, real quick. We we, we barely so there's there was a few types of Iron Hand lists that were a battle for salvation. Yeah, we, we did see Iron Hand flyers doing really well, and we talked about we broke that on the first day. You found a Reddit post someone was talking about that, right? Oh yeah, like six flyers was like, hey, has anybody thought about this? And, and we looked at it, and we were like, you know what, Iron Hands. Here's a positive: Iron Hands makes Storm Talons and Storm Hawks good. Yes, whereas before they were like bad and laughably so like yeah. why would you make these flyers only be able to take heavy weapons but then not give them something to mitigate that alt- yeah you know it's so there's good. nobody use them so anytime a new set of rules comes out like remember when eighth dropped and all we had was indexes all we did was make armies that and that took six of the same thing remember like six hell drinks six this, six that and then they eventually came up with the rule of three Okay, so six Iron Hand Flyers. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we're pretty sure Chapter Proof is going to change Flyers back down to three. So, like, that's the kind of stuff that's also going to happen, right? So all these things are going to get changed as they have historically gotten changed throughout this edition. Yep. I love that list. I would play the Iron Hand Flyers list right now if I was going to play Iron Hands. <clears throat> but instead, what I did was I went back to the drawing board. I spent the last month scheming with my man Wyatt, trying to figure out how I can play against this. I... We said before, I can't I can't control how I feel about something. If I see something and it makes me mad, like I can't stop that. But I can control how I approach that. So if Iron Hands are gonna shake it up and make me not win as much, rather than get mad and then just be mad about it for fucking three days, I'm gonna be like back to the drawing board. Hey, turns out the drawing board's my favorite place to be in 40k. Because I get to do my most scheming. I get to talk with my buddies, get on three different Facebook chats, chat people up figure things out, talk to people who've had a different experience with those units, and then I get to formulate a new game plan. That, to me, is the best part about 40K, advancing the narrative and what's competitive. I thought my list was really strong last month. I think it's even stronger now because Iron Hands, and I'm feeling really good about SoCal Open because of Iron Hands. It's a good thing. We're talking competitive, yep. guys. Competitive. This is competitive. These yep. are competitive problems. I mean, I, I like it just because of the fact that it is a shakeup because like we've had a fairly 
stale meta for a while. Uh, even after this changes to the Castellan, which was kind of the bane of the meta for a real long time, like it has stayed fairly stale. So this new Space Marines coming out just in general, and then on top of that, the supplements has really been like hammered that reset button. So people have to scramble to figure out what to do against them. And I think that's probably like the core of this entire thing is that it's like, this is such a shakeup. People don't know what to do or they don't want this big of a change. And so it's upsetting. But this is what happens sometimes. Like with every new patch of a game, like stuff gets changed. Every new season of a sporting event or like an esports or something, like it gets changed and balances are shifted and metas are changed and you got to adapt. And so, and don't forget, I'm, like, I'm ready G- to adapt. Don't for- and don't forget, GW is a company that has to roll things out on a timeline. They can't yeah. release everything at once. So, when what we were talking to about like this has been happening for a billion, half a billion years, is that we've got a whole new wave of things about to happen. 8.5, Psychic Awakening, all this shit. The game is going to be pivoting to its next form. It's going to be yep. going to 8.5, right? For all intents and purposes. So, the problem is, is that GW is never going to just be like, here it all is, because that's bad marketing. That's bad promotion. That's terrible. So yeah. while this is happening, it, it it gets unbalanced. It just, it's, uh, it's you can't do anything about it. It and happens. It only matters at the highest level of competition when you're meta surfing, working your ITC scores, working all that. That's, that's who's affected by this. And GW doesn't really care about us in that capacity. They do care about us. A lot more than they used to. They love throwing out this new stuff, letting us play it, figure out what's dope, and then people know what to buy. That's what Nick Rose does. That's what you know Andrew Ganyu's and Nick Davides. They whatever they're playing and winning with, people are going to buy. So GW respects that, but they're not going to deviate from the marketing plan to get paid. Like that's never going to happen. So it's going to be in balance until it's not. Yep. It's just it is what it is. You know, it's and it's been this way for since, since as long as I can remember. Yeah. And for regardless of where about the iron hands. I'm just happy that like space Marines feel like space Marines, like space Marines feel like the super soldier badasses. They have always been in the stories and in universe. And so for the first time in the decade that I've played 40 K space Marines actually feel awesome. And they feel like a threat that people are scared of, obviously. So like, I couldn't be happier. Like, you know, if it's Iron Hands, Imperial Fists, like my Ultramarines, like whatever, like I'm just happy Space Marines are badasses. Yeah. And I will concede two points right now. The way chapter tactics and, and customized chapter shit is working, you did see all the top guys were taking weapon artists and stuff like we talked about. That might be something that GW looks at because now you get to cherry pick optimize the offense and the defense and still keep the iron hands keyword. I think that's kind of one of those things where you need the top guys to kind of dissect it. So you can find out what's not truly perfect. And that might be one of those things, right? That might be, that might be one of those things and we'll see. Uh, I I I thought it was kind of weird. I thought it was kind of weird when we first read those rules, previewed those rules and how you got to keep all your keywords and everything. I was like, "Mm, we'll see what happens. Eh, But now we're seeing what happens and that might get addressed. It might not. We'll see, you know, whatever. Uh, not to downplay it at all. I mean, Space Marine is real strong and they're going to just be strong for a little while and we'll see what happens, man. I'm, I mean, at the end of the day is like my biggest advice to anybody out there who's getting triggered by this is like control it, control yeah. your act, your action. <laughs> like yeah. be, feel as angry as you want. But if you're honestly just going to put that much effort to, into being angry for an extended period of time, I mean, Maybe that's what you feel like. You could figure out how to beat Iron Hands just like Kenny did. Yeah, I'm actually down to play six. Good news for Chaos players. (laughs) Like me, 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 my man Zach, my man Sabat, we've been play testing our Chaos list. We are down to play six Iron players in SoCal. Like they fuck them up. So if you're a Chaos player, man, you should be doing a fucking dance, like super happy because you got all the tools to take care of the Iron Hands. I submitted my list last week. I was, I was GG. I was like, this is good. I'm fine. But I did have to scheme. I had to scheme relentlessly with my circle, which is my favorite part of the hobby is talking to all my people and, and, and getting a high score in battle scribe. And I feel like I have it right now. I think I'm totally prepared. And, but you know, I respect people's emotions is you know, whatever makes you happy. If you're actually happy being that angry, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to 
work a blood pressure medicine. <laughs> For some people, the dark side holds strong pull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's true. Haters going to hate. Potatoes yeah. going to potate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Iron hands, real strong. Wyatt is bringing his iron hands out here. Yeah. I mean, like, it's public statement. I don't give a fuck what happens to Iron Hands. I'm playing it for one event, and then I'm going to LVO with my Ultramarines. So, like, nerf them, do whatever. I'm just saying, my opinion is, I don't think they should be nerfed the way that people want them to be. Yeah, we're not there in the dialogue. We're not. I mean, it took put up a fight first. Yeah, put up a fight first. God, yeah, fucking cowards. Half a year to to nerf the Castellan Smash Cutlers. Yeah, dude. And we actually got better at playing 40k because of it. Actually, and there's another last thing I'm gonna say on it is I remember like in Taldar era, sixth edition, mm. all my buddies all switched to Taldar. And I didn't. I kept doing what I do, right? And then when it switched to seventh and they couldn't do that anymore. And I was like, you know what you did for that whole year? And I, he was like, What? I was like, get worse at 40k. Well, I got mm. better at it. And they were like, What do you mean? I was like, Well, you started playing an army that rerolled everything, ignore cover, and had every special rule in the game. You did that for a year. You got worse at this game while I got better. And then the, then it was Swiss to seventh edition. You couldn't do that anymore. And now you're losing your games because I'm actually better 40K than you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I always build lists based on worst case scenario. Because if I can figure out a way to beat worst case scenario where everything goes wrong for the strategy of that list, then if, if the, everything goes right, it's like an auto win. So I don't I don't think about stuff being OP. I don't think about stuff being too powerful. I think about this is the way it is. I have absolutely no control over it. And I don't get upset about things I have no control over. So, you know, if I didn't want to play Iron Hands, let's say like I was playing Dark Eldar still, then what I would have been doing for the past month is figuring out every which way possible to fight Iron Hands with Dark Eldar. And in point of fact, I watched a battle report today where Drukari beat the Iron Hands. So it can be done. Like, Chaos has answers for them. Eldar has answers for them. Like, other factions have yeah. answers for and them. And that's you the good thing about, about ITC it. format is but with secondaries, there's a there's an answer. There's solutions. Now, I won't lie. Like, my list I was playing that I was really proud of gets beat by Iron Hands super easily. I had to make a change. I had to... I had to like, if I didn't already have the models because I have an extensive Chaos collection... That would have been a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. To make the list the way I wanted it to play Iron Hands meta at SoCal Open would have cost me 300 bucks and a shitload of minutes of painting. Easy. So I will. So to surf the meta does cost money and time. True story. Never has it. Half a billion years. It's always been that way. Um, let's talk about. Um, and if you guys want to hear more on that subject, the we went real hard. Lots of hot takes in the uh, pregame show. The wet live webcast. You can get that in longwar.net. Imperial Fist for preview today, Wyatt. Oh, yes. We got some spiciness. So they released the uh, preview for some of the rules. They gave us a little taste. You know, the first taste is always free, right? Um, they go over the Siege Masters uh, enhanced chapter tactic again, which is where bolt weapons get that. Uh, additional auto hit on unmodified sixes, which is super cool. Uh, and then they preview the Imperial Fist Doctrine Addendum or Super Doctrine, whatever you want to call it, called the Legacy of Dorn. Whilst the Devastator Doctrine is active when resolving an attack made with a heavy weapon by a model with this ability against a vehicle, add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. So they finally spoiled it to us, Haspel. Now we know what their, their, you know, how their special shit is. You know, like that, you know, Iron Hands has one of the best ones where they get to reroll the ones for heavy weapons and ignore movement penalties. That's one of the things that makes Iron Hands super strong. These guys, plus one damage when shooting vehicles with their heavy weapons, which is actually <laughs> super strong, especially considering that the, uh, Devastated Doctrine also gives you the, the natural minus one AP to heavy weapons. So it's minus, so it's basically extra damage and extra AP when targeted vehicle. Iron Hands. Yeah. They, it they, says buildings good. too, but those don't exist. So 
Yeah, build, yeah I, I, I basically don't say buildings whenever I read these things because it's GW, GW, please. What's his name? Robin Curtis. Yeah. Hey, stop putting these dumb building rules in here. It's fucking stupid. It yeah. doesn't make any. Just stop it. Yeah. Just stop. What a waste of text. So God. this is pretty good. I mean, so we talked about earlier. Yeah, heavy bolters, auto cannons, really useful uh, to the chat. Uh, auto cannons innately. We use I used the math of an auto cannon to convince why how good this was compared to Iron Hands. Where if you just have a dreadnought that hits on threes with two with two who's arrived from a dreadnought with with auto cannons. Uh, the and let's say they both move right. So my Imperial Fist guy hits on fours while the um, Iron Hands guy still hits on threes. So let's say there's reroll auras because the difference is, is that other people need to use characters to get the rerolls. Iron hands don't. So they move my dude with the iron hands trait. He gets seven hits 7.1. I think my boy with the, who hits on fours cause he's Imperial fist. He still gets six hits. So he sacrifices one hit. Now let's say I get four wounds and the other guy gets five wounds. Or actually I think it was, they both get almost the same exact math on wounds. Because it's at that weird place. The difference is, is that I get an extra three damage if my wounds go through. Where these guys are it's the same. So damage threshold, when you math it out, is higher. Even if the dude's still hitting on fours for Iron Hands. So that's just one really basic combo list, you know, situation. Then Wyatt brought up, what about Heavy Bolters? He- oh, yes. Heavy Bolters so, going to AP two, two damage? Two damage. Ooh. Spicy. Yeah, that's good, huh? Especially with that Siege Breaker cohort that everybody likes. And Centurion's uh, looking real strong. Yeah, and also exploding sixes is their thing. And so. uh, what you know about three damage stalker bolters at minus two AP? Yeah. Like, I'm, dude, it's going to be a hail of fire. And I'm going to go with this guy's predictions. They they gave us kind of some, they didn't give us the spicy shit. We don't know what's in the, in, in the Pyro Fist Codex. I, based on what I'm seeing, they're giving us... Um, Eldar like stratagems. They're giving us Tau like stratagems for Space Marines. They're giving us some Chaos stratagems in the case of uh, Salamanders, like a Cloud of Fies aura of Etched Long War. They're taking the best stratagems and giving them to everyone out. I am calling it now. They're getting a shoot twice infantry stratagem. So, old prediction. I can't, I mean, I imagine this full blown Centaurian unit, all heavy bolters, exploding sixes, every combo in the game, mortal wounds shoots twice. So, yeah. you play all your stratagems. So- like six Centurions with heavy bolters and uh, hurricane bolters sitting next to a captain that can give them a two up ballistic skill plus a chaplain giving them plus one to wound uh, and possibly some psychic power buffs that we haven't seen yet is like insanely scary. You play that uh, that stratagem that gives them mortal wounds uh, against vehicles on sixes as well. I mean, yeah, like natural sixes explode. Sixes to wound turn into mortals, and it's two damage, and it's minus two AP. Like it just kills yeah. any tank. It's crazy. Yeah, they are literally DACA, and and so break down the other things they showed us. They gave us what a psychic power, um, like a warlord trait. Yeah, so they they showed off a warlord trait. Uh, it's basically transhuman physiology. So when resolving an attack against the warlord, one through three always fails. I don't like it because it's on a warlord. Uh, I think I would, there's yeah. definitely, I mean, it's your, there's other things I need that slot open for. I can't be using that. Yeah. Um, and then they show off one of the new, uh, psychic powers and they, they're, they're geomancers, which is geomancy. A Love that word. I think it's what it's called. Geokinetic. Right? Your geo genokinetic. Where is it? Geokinesis. Yeah, geokinesis. I wow. like geomancer better. Uh, so yeah, so they they show off rack and ruin, and this is another one of those things. They're like, hey, about buildings and blah blah. Nobody cares about buildings. So here's how it works: you target a unit if they are wholly within a terrain feature, within 18 inches and visible to the psyker. You rolled nine dice and on a five up, that's a mortal wound. And it's a sniper power. Mm. Yeah, that's a sniper. So that basically that can just turn off a little four wound character chilling in, in a bush. I love sniper psycho powers. Yep. It's pretty cool. Um, 
And then they talk about the Eye of Hypnoth, which is a relic that's been around since the Vigilus book. And it lets the bearer put out a six inch aura of reroll wounds of one. Real good. So this is really cool for Imperial Fist because they basically don't need an LT for their castle. They can have a captain model with this relic rerolling hits of one and wounds of one. And if you want to, you can make him a chapter master, which makes him the cheapest Rebute Gilliman in the game. Yeah. Fucking love it. That's real strong. Um, and then they have a uh, two CP stratagem called Praetorian's Wrath. Oh, I love this uh, one. Use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase if the Devastator Doctrine is active. Until the start of your next movement phase, when resolving an attack made with a heavy or grenade weapon by an Imperial Fist's model from your army, on an unmodified wound roll of six, the AP characteristic of that weapon is improved by an additional one for that attack. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. That's army-wide. Army wide. So like be prepared for a ton of intercessors with stalker bolt rifles with lots and lots of centurions in a siege breaker cohort that's going to be playing their mortal wound on sixes shenanigans with this Praetorian's wrath in their first shooting attack to absolutely evaporate vehicles. Love this one. And what's dope about this one is like, I, I'm telling you, man, there's going to be a shoot twice strategy. So like, they're going to do it to do it twice. And this is still um, on. Yeah. It's insane. And, and yeah. for the siege breaker cohort where sixes turn into mortal wounds, I'm telling you, man, you're going to get a centurion squad. That's going to be able to do all those things and do it twice. Like, ah, uh, it's going to mm. be so high. So mm-hmm. fucking high. I'm telling you, man. Uh, we also see in the uh, supplement, there is going to be crimson fists. And Pedro Cantor is in there, and it also has some Crimson Fist stuff. One of the things they show off is a relic called the Fist of Vengeance, and this relic has been around for a while. It's a uh, Crimson Fist Power Fist, um, Thunder Hammer Power Fist. No, with yeah, it's a three three flat damage Power Fist with no minus to hit. So it's pretty cool. So it's a nine point Thunder Hammer. So it's like a really cool Smash Captain that's really cheap. Is this guy? Yeah, is a jump a jump dude with this. Yep. Stoked on it. Yeah, is Pedro Primaris? Did they say? Uh, he is not. The the Primaris character we get is Tor Garadon. My man Tor. Garadon, the man yep. with the chin. Duke Nukem. Yeah. I can't, what, what was it you said to me? You Captain came, Falcon. Came here to chew bubblegum and blow up buildings. Kill heretics. Yeah. <laughs> and there are no buildings, um, so just keep chewing gum, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. 40K has no buildings. <laughs> he, he's all out of gum and there's no building. So he's just sad. He's just sad, man. <laughs> just sits there. <laughs> uh, and they, they show off some of his rules, but we've seen them before. In case you missed it, he's a uh, uh, siege captain. So uh, for himself, when attacking a vehicle, he adds one to the damage characteristic of the weapon being used. Which is actually kind of cool. He has a grav gun. Um, and since most vehicles you're going to be shooting at have that three, three up save, um, that increases the damage of your grav gun to D3. So then it's D3 plus one, which is, uh, kind of cool because it helps out that random damage number on the grav gun. I love that. And then the hand of defiance, uh, goes up to four flat damage, which is real nasty. He's a cool ass looking dude, man. Man, what a great model. He's my favorite Primaris model so far. Um, And then it talks about how he has the Signum Array. Uh, This is something that Iron Father Pharos has. I think if uh, this is going to be a trend, it might be guys in Gravis armor have a Signum Array. So he can just look at a unit within three inches and give it a two of ballistic skill for a phase. That's the new trend. We've been seeing that a lot. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a good one. And then otherwise, he has captain rules. So yeah. reroll so hit, roll, him hit as a rolls chapter, of one. Him as a master with is really good, but like... I points. don't think you can upgrade a named character. Is he not a master already? He's a captain. Captain. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you may take him, you may not, but like literally captain upgraded a master with the LT relic yeah. is going to be... Mm, that's kind of the that's card. kind of the combo though, right? Because he's a captain with the Signum Array. So for all intents and purposes, without... Negative modifiers, it's a chapter master, you know, because well, you, you take hit on two zero well, ones. You could take him 
and another captain instead of a captain and an LT and have yes. every base covered in its amazing. Right, exactly. It's maze balls. So then, because like there's really cool things you can do with the Signum Array, like um, giving somebody that two of ballistic skill can help with negative modifiers. It can also help if you have like a vehicle or a dreadnought that's in its bottom bracket. It's like automatically got a two up ballistic yeah, skill for yeah. that phase. Um, you can have a cheapo captain. I mean, dog fucking chapter master with the eye of Hypnoth. Let's not sleep on it. I mean, Imperial Fist, uh, uh, Grav rep- Repulsors and Executioners are still real good too. Like, yep, they're real strong. They're real I mean, strong. I just just thinking about the main gun <laughs> on that executioner doing minimum uh, of four three damage. To, yeah, minimum four damage. It can't, like it can't do Ugh. less than four damage. Four to seven damage. That's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, Pyro fist. Mm. Spicy. We'll see. Yeah, I've seen I've seen comments from from people that have been playing Iron Hands like Don Houston is like, yes, please keep, keep whining t- about, Iron talking about Iron and, Hands. Yeah, don't don't mind us. Don't mind us, Pyro fist players. Oh my god, it's gonna be strong, and I think Salamanders are gonna be even stronger. Honestly, man, I think GW is gonna FAQ that their their Cloud of Flies stratagem. I don't think it's Ooh, they're gonna let it yes. let you apply it to just any infantry model like that. I think it's gonna be too much. Yeah, um, what was that one thing with the thunder hammer? I don't know if I can talk about all those just yet. Oh, like, okay. I think all they right. I think everyone knows about the sacrifice though, the heroic sacrifice strategy. That was already yes. that got leaked, right? Yeah. So that's the one where you play it on infantry model and it's a six inch cl- bubble of cloud of flies where like every every other infantry unit within six inches can't be targeted as if it unless it's the closest. Mm-hmm. That is so it means you could just take this guy who can't be targeted in any way and he could play it so all the other guys can't get targeted. So you could walk up units like Centaurians uh, or just make Devastator squads not get shot or anything else you want. But like there's going to be a combo where six Centaurians, assault Centaurians can walk up to a knight and kill it with flamers easily <laughs> because they're going to be able to do some real deal shenanigan yep. combos. Yep. Like it's, it's crazy. And you can't even shoot them. You can't even fucking shoot them. It's going to be so dirty. Yo. Yep. Huh. I mean, unless you have Vect. That's where like, you know, now suddenly with these really powerful stratagems that are coming out. Ooh, now Dark I, Eldar and I GSC have, looking spicy. I am going to pivot my opinion of Vect, and, you know, of Vect stratagems. If, like if there's going to be this level of gangsterness, you know. So I don't know. I'm pretty excited. I love the Iron Hands Codex. I'm stoked beyond belief. I, I, my opinion has always been make it more OP. Whenever there's like, hey, how do you balance this? Make it, make it more OP. That's yep, that's what everybody like. strong. Buff everybody. So right now, Space Marines are getting their OPness right now, and it'll come back around chaos at the end. Did you say they have a a big O? There's a lot of length and girth to their OPness. Yeah. <laughs> Never gets old. It does not. Old. Honestly, we've been saying that for how many years now? I just celebrated my ninth year of business uh, six days ago. Yeah. It's Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. And I can say in nine years, it hasn't gotten old. Well, in, in nine years, how many Bohemian gentlemen have you had carnal knowledge of? Mm, my record is 31 on a Friday. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, hasn't gotten old. Um, yeah. So I think we did it. Uh, no, don't supervision. Mr. Cat Daddy Bearcat himself can be proud of this episode, I think. Yeah. We didn't even say any naughty words. We didn't. Did I not say a bad word? Fuck. 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 Uh, no, we did. We did. We did hit that. That's for demonetized fairly early. Oh, good. oh okay. Weird. Yeah. In, yeah. Case, in case he listened and he, and he was proud of us, he listened to the end. <laughs> now he knows. But Hassel, you want to take us out of here? Evacuate? In our moment of triumph, I think you overestimate their chances. 